One of the criticisms of the Uber world is that they are, are stuck in some sense at the, um, th that the employer, the Uber, does control some of their choices. You mentioned, Alan, that um, they, there's flexibility in the hours they work and positioned that as their choice to be choosing to work more or work less. Um, Sarah, in your world, you know, that you mentioned, again, this flexibility and choice. So could you each talk a little bit about how, how do we know that it really is a choice as opposed to um, somehow being withheld from a full-time working arrangement? So, so, Alan, thinking first of your survey and then Seth, your definition, and then Sarah, you, what you see in your surveys. Well, let me mention a few things in response, and I think that's a very good question. Uh, one might think that Uber has grown at this exponential rate because the workers are desperate and they don't have other alternatives. That actually does not seem to be the case. If you go back to that curve that I showed, their growth rate increased as the unemployment rate fell from 8% to 7%, from 7% to 6%, then 6% now down to 5%. Uh, I think the main reason why they're growing at such a fast rate is there aren't too many opportunities like this in the job market where workers do have such total flexibility where they can, if they have spare time uh, and the resource, the car, uh, put it to economic use. Uh, the way I defined uh, their choice is the company doesn't control when they work, whether they work, where they work. That's entirely up to, uh, up to the drivers. And the way the platforms are structured, the driver doesn't have to give, give uh, Uber notification or uh, for these other platforms that we looked at as well, they use a similar type of model. Uh, so uh, I think that in an economic sense, this is clearly a choice on the part of, of workers. Uh, moreover, it seems to be a choice that they're making even though there are more job openings and other opportunities that have been growing in the traditional employment sector. Okay, right. Seth? Well, so the, the law is premised on uh, a certain kind of relationship between a worker and, and a business entity. Um, and it, uh, it just doesn't seem to exist in this world. Let me also premise this by saying we're not endorsing the business model. We're not enthusiasts for any of these companies or even for this sector. We're observing that this is a new phenomenon in the world of work. And it is a growing, rapidly growing phenomenon. And what we want is for public policy and the law to keep up to make sure that the values that are expressed in our laws are also lived in this sector. Um, but this question of control and economic dependence mm -hmm. is right at the core of the employment relationship. In this sector, you don't see the same kind of relationship. You see people flowing in and out and making a lot of decisions that traditional employees are not able to make. Um, employers have a lot of control in the traditional employment relationship. In this relationship, there is a small amount of control, but it's just not commensurate. So we have to have a new way of talking about it and a new way of ensuring that these workers get a fair share and that we're efficient in the markets. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, do you wanna add yeah. to that? You know, I really think that we have to look at this right now in the context of income inequality and that we're just seeing uh, an economy that is just not doing right by our middle class, working class people and that the kinds of jobs that we're seeing are just not, let's say, like the great auto worker jobs post World War II. And I think that's just the truth. And I think that Right now, we're talking about on-demand economy jobs, and really the, the thing that help people, the thing that helps people is that they can get these jobs in addition to their full-time jobs or other things when they need them. And we really shouldn't poo-poo that because that's actually really helpful. But I think that the downside that we're seeing is that we're really not saying that we're going to be figuring out how to have an economy where we will see so many people having the kinds of jobs that they need with the security. So this question of choice is a funny one. 
on the one hand, it's very technical and legal, and we have to go through those things because that's just the truth. We're a, a country of laws and regulation. But on the other hand, I think what we have to say is that the changes in the economy are as real as the ones that workers faced when they left the family farm in the 1800s, and that if we say, let's just go back and pretend that we have a manufacturing economy with full-time jobs, and that's the heyday, and that's the goal, I think we are kidding ourselves. And so really what I think we want to start to say is, um, you know, Alan alluded to the idea of portable benefits, but let's really unpack the ideas like an, a portable benefits strategy, which Freelancers Union has been really working on for, let's say, 20 years. And what I think is that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and see a free market where Silicon Valley companies are going to come in and take over the job of providing benefits that employers did, but that we could recreate a system of new kinds of intermediaries like unions, nonprofits, other kinds of groups who could have a job of delivering these benefits. And then what we will start to see, like the way FDR did when with the NLRA and created a whole new labor movement, we'll see a whole new movement of social sector actors who have a job of providing the safety net, thereby building a constituency for change. And I think that that's, to me, real choice because people have options of a new set of actors who can help represent them in addition to the traditional labor movement. So we're not getting rid of institutions that have worked so well for us, but we're really being creative about expanding that. And I think that's what we have to be doing is looking at these opportunities, these changes in classifications and say, A, how does it help the worker? And B, how do we build institutions for the workers because non-governmental, non-foundation funded groups are always the way that really enhance our democracy.